Quiet, please. There are health risks which none of us want to think about, problems we all push to the back of our minds. But there is one problem which, if we ignore it, it simply becomes more dangerous. I'm talking about breast cancer, which is the leading cause of death of women between the ages of 30 and 50. I'm talking to two women, Kate and Margaret. Their stories are different but each of us may one day have to face similar situations and cope with them in our own way. Let's start with Kate. Kate, can you tell us about yourself? I'm 34, almost 35. I've been divorced for 10 years. Mm. My husband left us when Sarah, my daughter, was five. That must have been difficult for you. Yes, at the time it was, and I think that it's always very difficult when children are involved. Mm. But uh, I got a new job and our life was very happy. And that's when you discovered something was wrong. I go swimming with Sarah quite a lot and um, it was when I got home and I was having a shower that I suddenly noticed there was something um, different. Well, I wasn't looking for anything. I should have been, but I wasn't. My mother died of breast cancer. And I'd heard that that increased the risk of me getting it. But I never wanted to think about it. And then there it was, quite unmistakable. You know, women say sometimes to me, I've got thickening in my breasts, you know, I've got lumpy areas. How do you tell? Well, I could tell. Are you all right? Yes. You don't look all right. What's the matter? Nothing, probably. <laughs> you realize that eight out of ten of these things are benign. This feels all right, but just to be sure, I think you should have a biopsy. My mother died of breast cancer. Well, you're not going to. Are you sure? Of course I'm sure. I've got to go into hospital. When? Tomorrow. Why tomorrow? I've got a lump. Where? Here. It's probably nothing. Just a cyst, but the doctor says he wants to have a proper look at it. Julie's coming to see you, and she's going to stay here for a day or two. Are you scared? Yes, I am a bit. It'll be all right. I'm sure it'll be all right. Kate, this is Mr. Grimmie, your surgeon. Hello. Hello, Kate. I believe you're unhappy about signing the form. Well, it just seems so drastic. You do understand that without your signature, we can't go on to the next stage if it's necessary. How will you know if it's, um... We look at a frozen section through a microscope on the spot. And if it is malignant? We'll have to remove your breast. It'll mean only one operation, one anaesthetic. What if I don't sign? Then we can only do the biopsy. Oh, I'd like to think about it. I'd like to know what was going to happen to me. I promise you it's the best way. No, I don't want to sign. All right. I'll schedule your biopsy for 12 noon tomorrow. The sister will prepare you beforehand. Okay. Thank you. Is he angry with you? No, I don't think so. I really think it's your decision and you have to make it. I wish I could be more help. It's all right. Okay. Thank you.
going to put you off to sleep now. You look terrific. It's not all right. It's cancer. What happens now? Hmm? I don't know. I've been waiting for someone to come and tell me all morning. side. Yeah. I know it's hard to face, but you realize what must happen now. It's called a mastectomy. In my opinion, it's the only safe thing to do. All right. When? Well, I think we can let you go home now. We'll schedule you back in in a couple of days' time. I don't remember much about Mum. She was in bed a lot. And then she had this cage over her legs because she couldn't bear the weight of the bedclothes. I think it must have spread all over by then. Did you know it was cancer? Oh, no one said that word. And Dad didn't tell us. He couldn't. <laughs> She'd never touch us. She never put her arms around us. I remember trying to get into bed with her once. I think I was about four. She pushed me out. <laughs> I cried so much. That was the worst thing I remember. Well, that's because her arms were too thin and she didn't want you to know. I just didn't understand then. Have you told Sarah? I can't. I think you should. It's all right. It's all right. <laughs> Darling, the important thing is that it's not that big and they found it in time. To stop it spreading? Yes. <gasps> oh, I know for sure. After the operation, yes. Oh, Mum. <gasps> Darling. <laughs> Come on, come on. Hey, hey, for a schoolgirl, you've got a lot of mascara running down your cheek. Some of you. It's all
Morning, Kate. Morning, Kevin. I've got those cuttings. I'm going away for a few days. Going on holiday? Yes, yeah, sort of. Have a nice time. Thank you. I rang Sarah's father. What for? I thought he ought to know. In case something happens. Nothing's going to happen. Well, don't let him take her back. I won't. Of course not. What was it like after the operation? Were you in a lot of pain? No, not really. The nurses gave me something every few hours. She was so strange. I'd wake up and people would be there and then they'd be gone. I do remember my father sitting beside me. Sitting beside me for hours. He never said anything. But he was always there. And then they came and told me that my lymph nodes were clear. The cancer hadn't spread. Was that a relief for you? I suppose it should have been. But it wasn't at the time. I was still too confused. doctor said you'd like to see me. Oh. I wouldn't talk to anyone much. They wanted me to talk, but I didn't want to. My doctor asked me if I'd like to talk to a hospital visitor, a woman who'd also had a mastectomy. I said I didn't care. He took this to me, yes. My name's Robin, by the way. I'm Kate. I'm sorry if I don't shake hands with you. <laughs> Um, how long did it take you before you could use your arm? Oh, a while. It depends on you. You have to keep exercising it, raising it a little each day. Look, like this. See, you, you walk your hand up the wall, and you can see it getting a little bit higher every day. Oh, I play tennis now. I do a lot of horse riding, too. It's funny, you can't tell. <laughs> You're not supposed to. <laughs> now, look, I've got here a temporary prosthesis which you can wear when you leave the hospital. And then when you're ready, you can be fitted for a permanent one. Now, the hospital will pay for some of it. I'll leave you some pamphlets here so you can read them. But it's a lot easier to live with than a false arm or a false leg. You won't believe me now, but I'm very comfortable with it. Comfortable? No, it was reassuring in a way, but the word bothered me. She was comfortable and I liked her. But I didn't want to be right. the same way as her. I'll come back and I wanted to ask her if I could still wear the clothes I liked, still look oh. sexy. Oh, <laughs> but she wasn't like that, and I didn't like to ask her. Was I going to sink under it? Dad's been doing some gardening. <laughs> I can tell. Are you all right? I feel different. You're not different. No, there's only a little bit less of me now. Come on. We're waiting. Huh? Come on. Good morning, Kate. Have a nice holiday? Yes, thank you. Oh, oh Careful, Sarah. Oh, that's all right. Mm. Ah, it's lovely to see you. You can have a little bit. Oh, thank you, Papa. <laughs> what are you going to have? Whatever you're going to have. Oh, I don't drink that stuff. <laughs> Get a bit of wood. Oh, good. 
Mm. I love this stuff. <laughs> well, all the best. Welcome home, ma'am. Thank you. Cheers. Thank you. Yes. Should we put this in first? No, I'll do this. Okay. Now tell me if I'm hurting you, okay? I'll do it up on the last mm. one. No, I think it's too big. Yeah? Can you take some stuffing off? Okay. Make you into a double A. <laughs> yeah, that'll do. Let's see. It's good. <sighs> Just Can't tell the difference? Do you? Mm. I think we could do better, what say you? I tried it on. It was unexpectedly comfortable. A little strange, but comfortable. I remembered what that woman Robin had said. You get comfortable with it. Perhaps that wasn't so bad. Not having any problems? No, I oh. feel very well, actually. Wonderful. Well, you look good. You look lovely. Jane invited me to a dinner party. It was the first time I'd been out since the operation. I felt so stupid. I went through a sort of crisis that night. I remembered a woman I'd met once at a party. Somebody told me she'd lost a breast. She seemed kind of huddled into herself, as if she was, I don't know, ashamed. I just didn't want to be like that. He's a nice guy, isn't he? He's all right. Did he tell you about his accident? Oh, the crutches. Is it true? Yes. <laughs> I heard him ask you to drive him home. He's a cheeky bugger, isn't he? Are you going to? Actually, I was going to ask you if you don't mind. I, I, I wouldn't mind going home soon. I'm not feeling really... Are you all right? Yes, I'm fine. It's just that, um... I don't know. I stayed awake all night, I, next to Sarah. I, I couldn't bear the thought of sleeping in my own bed, alone. But slowly after that, I started coming to terms with it. I joined a self-help group of women with the same problem. It seemed a slightly corny thing to do at first, but hearing the way others coped with their problems, some of them being a lot worse than myself, seem to help. The best precaution you can take to protect yourself against breast cancer is to do monthly breast self-examination, BSE. There are two parts to a thorough examination of your breasts. First part involves feeling your breasts to check for any lumps or changes. In the second part, you look carefully at your breasts in a mirror to see if you can notice any difference in their size or shape. The tissue of the breast extends beyond the breast mound. To check your breasts thoroughly for any sign of cancer, you need to examine a wide area around your breasts. 
The method we recommend involves moving your hand up and down your breasts in parallel strips. It is very much like the way you would go about mowing the lawn. You should examine the area that reaches to the collarbone at the top, to the bra line at the bottom, and which is bounded at the sides by a line midway between your breasts, and a line down from the armpit. You should also feel your armpit, as enlarged glands in this area may be a sign of breast cancer. The situation that I found myself in was having to, in developing relationships with people, to determine when it is you are going to tell them the inevitable that uh, you have had a mastectomy. But of course I think it does all relate to your own self-esteem and if your self-esteem is high, be you in a permanent relationship or not, well then you're far more confident about telling people things about yourself. When my husband knew I must have a mastectomy, he could not face up to it. He does not believe I will be properly a woman. He left me. At first I cried very much, but my family are very angry at him. His family too. And they all helped me. I have my mothers, my sisters. They all helped me with the children. And then I began to feel that perhaps I did not like him very much anyway. We were very young when we were married. It was done through the family. Now he's gone, there is no one to shatter the children. Sometimes I think they are more happy. I think I am more happy too. Sometimes I cry, but uh, not very much. Well, after I found the lump and it was confirmed by the doctor that it was malignant, he gave me three choices. I could ignore it and come back in six months. I could have one breast removed or I could go for broke and have two breasts removed. And after a fortnight's thinking about it, discussing it with the family, my husband especially, we decided we'd go for broke and we two came off. I had bilateral mastectomy, I was only 34 at the time. Didn't really pose that big a problem because I decided straight away that I'd have reconstruction. And 11 months later, that's exactly what I did. I've never regretted it. I had both breasts reconstructed to a size, one size larger than I was before. And it's terrific. I can wear any clothes I, I want. I like wearing fine evening clothes. I love playing sport. I wear a lot of sporting gear, love swimming. And I found that having made the choice to have two breasts removed and have the reconstruction, that it hasn't hindered my lifestyle in any way. I've just got on with the rest of my life and I've really enjoyed it. Well, it all happened four years ago. I found a lump in my left breast. I did all the right things. I went straight to, the, to my doctor and it eventuated that after a biopsy that it was discovered um, that it was a malignant growth. Then the fear set in. Um, after the operation, I felt as I was sitting in the uh, hospital bed that the fear of dying was just so strong. And my husband, my husband couldn't cope with it. He was. He was so afraid that he collapsed in the hospital from fear. He just thought he was going to lose me. And that's what it's been. That's the part, the hardest part to... Uh, to overcome the fear. The loss of your own, part of your own body is is um, is bad, but at the time. But I've lost a child, and nothing, nothing is, is worse than that. A body is nothing at all compared to the loss of a child. What about you, Margaret? I'm still sorting things out in my mind. Why I did what I did. What did you do? You don't know where to start. I'm 46. I've got three children, two boys, and a little girl who came later. When were you first aware of something wrong? Only about a year ago. And you didn't have any warning? No, it came quite out of the blue. 
Jeff and I had been to a party to farewell some friends who are going to Canada. You okay? Yes, I'm all right. You sure? Why are you still up? Oh, I fell asleep. I shouldn't be watching this rubbish anyway. Is Gemma in bed? Gemma's asleep, and Toby got to bed around nine. I'll finish my homework. I'm going upstairs. Off you go, then. You're not okay, are you? What is it? My breast really hurt when I bumped into the door. And I've got a lump. There. How big? Well, I don't know, not that big. Feel it? We better find out what that is. The surgery was busy, as it always was. I waited nearly an hour. I'd always felt if I ever got cancer, I'd rather not know, not go through whatever you have to go through. Just let it take its course. A couple of times I nearly got up and left. But I waited. It's firm, but it's very mobile. I wouldn't worry about it too much. Wouldn't you? Not for the moment, anyway. We should have another look at it in, say, a month or so. He says it's all right. Nearly sure? Well, he, he thinks so. Nearly sure. What did he tell you to do? He said, wait and see. Jeff? Yeah, yeah, I'm still here. I, uh, I just don't like the idea of waiting and seeing. I was feeling so good when I rang you. Look, don't worry about it. I'm sure he's right. I'm sure it'll all be all right. Uh, don't worry about it. Is it hurting? Yes, a bit. More because I'm thinking about it. Can't you stop thinking about it? No, I can't. Oh, but it can't be cancer. Cancer doesn't hurt. Doesn't it? That's so they say. It's no good, you know. You can't stop thinking about it. I can't stop thinking about it. Can't you have it checked out properly? I'll uh, write you a referral. You don't think I'm being silly? Not at all. If it's worrying you, we should do something about it. But uh, judging from my experience, I'm willing to bet that they'll tell you it's quite harmless. I hope you win the bet. Margaret, I'm just going to take a few scans of your breast in the area of the lump to provide some more information for the doctor with, to see whether it's fluid filled or, or whether it's not, okay? So I'm just going to put some oil on first of all. That just forms the contact between the scanner and your skin. This won't hurt at all. Sorry, but uh, they don't like the look of it. 
What do you mean? We think it could be cancerous. But, I mean, you were sure it was all right. I'm sorry. I felt there was no reason to refer you at first. We see perhaps 500 lumps a year. Maybe only one of them is cancerous. It's not always easy to tell. Too many people get alarmed for no reason. But if I hadn't insisted... <laughs> you were right to insist. What happens now? You'll need a biopsy. You, you know what that is. The lump is removed and looked at by a pathologist. Things need to move quickly now. You realise that, don't you? Emma, bedtime. malignant, isn't it? I'm afraid so. What? What do we have to do? If it was my wife, I'd recommend a mastectomy. The removal of your breast. That's it, is it? There is another technique, just the removal of the lump, which we've already done, and the removal of the lymph nodes under your arm to check that it hasn't spread. You think the mastectomy? That is what I recommend. But you should talk it over between yourselves before deciding. Jeff told me what the doctor said. It's going to be all right. You'll see. I'll make her something to eat, eh? She looked so old and upset. I felt guilty. Why did the idea of losing a breast seem so appalling to me? I hadn't taken all that much notice of my breasts over the years. I didn't wear low-cut dresses or see-through tops. Jeff was the only one who need ever see me. Although that was one of the thoughts I found hardest to bear. I didn't want him seeing a mutilated me. I wouldn't care. I wouldn't. You don't know till you see me. Yes, I do. I'd be so lopsided and ugly. You wouldn't be ugly. Just take a little bit of getting used to, that's all. For you. 
the both of us. And then, once we got used to it, it just seemed like normal. Won't? It won't ever be normal. Well, how'd you like it if it had a bit of you cut off? I wouldn't like it. And I didn't say I would. Anyway, it's not happening to you, it's happening to me. I think it's happening to both of us. I can't decide it for you. Thought we were in this together. Still have to be your choice. Well, I suppose I'd better have it done. Would you like me to find them in the morning? No, I will. Can I speak to Dr. Burgess, please? Yes, I'll wait. I sent the kids to the pictures. Did you ring him? No. You know what he said? You can't put it off. I'll do it tomorrow. We'll keep them strong and healthy With golden flakes of wheat Wheat picks wholesome goodness Is what kids love to eat but the next day, I just sat. I watched television, but I'd no idea what was on. I kept trying to make myself pick up the phone. I couldn't do it. It felt like putting my head on the chopping block, or more accurately, my breast. But why did I feel so strongly about it? I couldn't really work it out. By lunchtime, I'd started drinking white wine. What are you doing here? Well, I thought I might have lunch at home. Drinking is not going to help. It staves some things off. Did you call? No. And I don't need a lecture. Now, wait a minute. It's not just you. It's us. It's all of us. What are we? A collective? An anthill. All for one and one for all. You're drunk. Possibly. I like it better this way. And how long is this going to go on for? How would I know? You're going to have orgies of self-pity for the next however many years or so? I wouldn't know. I don't know how long it takes to get used to it. I may never get used to it. Have a drink. Suit yourself. I'll make you some coffee. I don't need coffee. She's made the decision, but she's terribly depressed. I just worry about what's going to happen to her, to both of us. So I thought I'd come to you for a second opinion. Do you know the size of the lump? That's the crucial thing. Less than two centimetres, I think. Could be all right. It all depends on the size, you see. But if a lump's small enough, it's usually a candidate for a lumpectomy. That's what we call the removal of the lump only, and the lymph glands, plus radiation. But, uh, is it safe? Well, no one will tell you it's absolutely safe. We haven't been making comparisons for long enough. But the figures in overseas tests so far, over an eight-year period, show no difference in the survival rate. None at all? Well, nothing that's statistically significant. 
So you think it's reasonable just to have the lump removed? Well, I think so. But depending on the type of cancer, and as long as it's been detected early enough, now that's the key to it, finding it early enough. But is it likely to come back? It's not likely to, no. What if it does? Well, she'd have to consider the options. But in the meantime, she'd still have a breast. Thanks very much for your time. I think what it comes down to is this. I don't mind if you have your breast off. But you do. That is how I feel the most important thing. I think it's important. For now, anyway. Later on, it might be different. If it came back? Then it might never come back. It probably won't. Let's go out. I don't feel like going out. I might cry. Well, if it's how I feel, let's leave it at the lump only and the lymph nodes. All right? All right. And what was the next stage like? You had to have your lymph nodes removed. Yes, the same surgeon did it. I don't think he really approved of what I'd decided. Well, did he say so? No, but I was going against his advice and he didn't like it. Yeah. Did that worry you? A little, but I wasn't going back on it. I wasn't going to lose a breast just to get his approval. Mm. And why do they remove the lymph nodes? Well, the lymph is a sort of cleaning and draining system throughout the body. And the nodes, as far as possible, trap hostile cells. If there were cancer cells there, it would indicate it had spread. Then I probably would have had to have chemotherapy. And then you had to wait for your results. Yes, that was awful. Jeff and I didn't talk much. We just waited. Hello there. Just going to have a look at your dress here, Mrs. Raymond. Yes. Right, to see if everything's all right. Everything appears to be all right. Um, he's a buzzer here, so if you do need us, give us a buzz, all right? Thank okay. you, Sister. Thank you, Sister. I've got good news for you. The lymph nodes are clear. I'll leave you alone for a bit. We'll talk later about arrangements for the radiation. properly. After that came the radiation. Not straight away, because you have to be able to raise your arm. That was a bit slow and difficult. I had to exercise it gently. I used one of those little magnets to keep track of my progress. When I could raise my arm high enough, I was ready for the radiation. I'd expected a lot of side effects, but it wasn't too bad. A bit like a mild case of sunburn. Okay, that's right. Thanks. Things slowly did get back to normal. I had to go back into hospital for a couple of days. I had a tube implanted in my breast under anaesthetic and tiny radioactive beads fed through it. I had to be in isolation for those days. And then it was over. I was out. I was safe. I was at home.
I hadn't realised how much I'd thought about dying in those few months, though I kept the thought pushed to the back of my mind until I came to renew a subscription to a magazine I liked. I could have a normal one-year subscription or two at a discount. I chose two. I realised then that I'd made a firm commitment to living. So you think you've done the right thing? I'm not sure. Perhaps that's something I'll know in time. But I think I've done the right thing for me. I think that's all you can ever do, work out the right thing for you and do it. And what about you, Kate? Well, you adjust, and with time you think about it less and less. It ceases to become the most important thing. There have been moments, though. <laughs> Good afternoon, Kate. Hello. Been a lovely day? Yes. Do you worry about the possibility of the cancer coming back, perhaps in the other breast? I certainly check every month, but I do worry about my daughter, Sarah. Would you like some honey? No, thanks. This means I'm going to get it, doesn't it? Oh, of course not. But you got it and your mother got it. So that means that I'll get it. Oh, that's nonsense. That doesn't mean that at all. Makes it more likely, though, doesn't it? A little. But it doesn't mean that it will happen. But... If you keep checking yourself like I taught you, I mean, that's all you can do. God, it'll probably take me half the day. You lucky bitch. Then the thing happened that I was half hoping would happen and half dreading. I began to meet John for lunch in the park. I also began to like him a lot. I knew that sooner or later he'd have to, he would ask me out to dinner and sooner or later I would have to tell him. I also knew I shouldn't leave it too long. No, thank you. Is anything the matter? Yes, actually, there is. There's something I've been wanting to tell you all evening, and I don't seem to be able to. Tell me. Tell me. I'm trying to. I'm... Something important, yeah? Yes, it's very important to me. And you're saying I should brace myself? <clears throat> yes, I, I don't know how you'll take it. Try me. What is it? I've had a mistake to me. A what? The removal of your breast. Which side? The right side. <laughs> Great. I always preferred the left side anyway. <laughs> you worried me. He took it so well. He made a joke of it. Yes, all right. Let's have yes. Anyway, he's still around. Yes. Two brandies, please. You've heard Margaret's story, and you know that it's now possible to only have a lump removed. Yes. If you were faced with the same decision and actually given that choice, do you think you'd still choose to have a mastectomy? Well, it's hard to say. Um, my mother died of breast cancer. I was terrified. But you don't feel sorry for yourself? No. Of course not. M Margaret, it's almost a year now since you had your lump removed. Yes. How are you feeling? Good. Is it different from the way you felt before? Yes, I'm more conscious of life passing. I'm trying to make the most of it. I do more things for myself, things I like doing. So the, the experience has actually changed you? Yes. I'm calmer than I used to be, more at peace. It makes you realise you may not have a lot of time on Earth and trivial things bother you less. Jeff and I are closer than we used to be. So it wasn't all bad? Well, I wouldn't wish it on anyone, but yes, it did have its positive side. But I was lucky. Why? I found the lump by accident early. It's not the sort of accident you can count on. Meaning that we should all keep examining ourselves? Well, it's silly not to. Do you? <laughs> well, no, but I think I will. 
when something like this happens, you keep saying to yourself, why me? Why me? Why me? And you have to learn to say, why not me? And then get on and deal with it as best you can. Thank you, Kate. Thank you, Margaret, for sharing your stories. Tape's cut. Thank you very much. Yeah.